We're going to talk about how to actually get your friends to play Commander for reals. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, again, joined by Amber, and that makes us the nitpicking nerds. Every single day, we got a new video for you, and the best way to support us for making said videos, since this probably isn't the first time you've seen us, is to go to Patreon. There's a link in the description, and you can directly give us money, and it will literally be the difference between us making videos or not. Yes, and always remember that we don't have to do crappy ads when you support us on Patreon.com. Uh, TCG Player is another way to support us indirectly. You can use our affiliate link in the description. Go there, buy the cards you're going to buy anyway. You get them sent directly to your house. You spend no extra money, but the nitpicking is supported simply because you started with our link. And we're sponsored by Moxfield. There's going to be an ad somewhere in the video, and you're going to have no idea when it's coming, and you're going to be blindsided by it. Also, Hudson McCabe, you're an awesome patron. Yes, you are an awesome patron, uh, uh, Hudson McCabe, and we moved you over here. Because of how awesome you are. Because of how awesome you are. And happy birthday to every human and cat whose birthday is today. Yeah, so we all know, Commander, pretty tough format to get into. You definitely have to know what Magic the Gathering is and how to play. But once you do that and you're like, oh, I come from Modern or I draft all the time and I want to play Commander, what's the actual best way to get into it? Well, your deck simply can't be too overwhelming, too complicated, too many triggers, and too hard to keep track of things. There's a lot going on, so what we want is simple decks. Things that are really easy to play that we pick up, we play, and it takes almost no effort to learn. Yeah, and you're not going to buy your own deck or build your own deck, most likely, if you just don't know if you want to play Commander or not. You're just like, hey, what is this? Like, maybe I'll try it out, but I don't necessarily want to make the investment. So usually the best thing to do is to borrow a deck. And I think Wizards of the Coast, actually, is releasing starter Commander decks on December 2nd. So they are, I would assume, things that would be great to lend out to your friends who don't know how to play. Yeah, so these are, uh, this is hashtag not sponsored. Wizards didn't make us do this, don't no. worry. So what Wizards did is they made five allied color decks for beginners. These are really simple, easy to play, and they're great decks, but they're not perfect. Maybe we can do something to make these better. Well, we went ahead and uh, made them made them better. Uh, they're $25 each for the Starter Commander Wizards decks, but we just went ahead and made five nitpicking nerd starter decks that are $20 each, and we figured, let's take what Wizards did and improve upon it. Also, I guess... The lists of these are also out now, along with the lists of the other ones, so we can compare them. Yes. Uh, also, these are going to be um, complementary to each other. If you buy the Wizards decks or you build one of our decks, they're going to be about the same power level and be able to compete against each other. Yes, but the, the hallmark of a deck that you need to lend out to somebody or that you're going to borrow to figure out how to play Commander or get introduced to Commander, it's a very overwhelming format. So the deck needs to be linear, simple to pilot, and not overwhelming and not lead to decision paralysis. So you kind of have to nerf it a little bit, but then still make it playable and able to win. So when I'm looking at the five starter decks, not all of them seem very linear. There's, there's a couple that are just like, they seem kind of confusing, especially the black red one. I have no idea what you're supposed to do at any given moment with that deck. And they don't meet all the criteria. It seems like some of them will be a little complicated. Yeah. Uh, Chaos specifically, like you said, the red black one, is a very confusing archetype to play. Uh, it's not linear. You're not. You're going to get confused because the deck doesn't just go for a win like most decks. It like wants to go off in all sorts of directions. Yeah. So we're we're really reining this in, and we're making them even easier to pilot, but not giving up too much power. Uh, so the average ramp spells. We went ahead in the starter commander breakdown, the Wizards of Coast version. The average ramp is ten point six. The average interaction is fifteen, and the average amount of card draw is nine point six. But Jerry's hit him with the NN startups pack. Uh, for us, uh, the average amount of ramp is 15.2. Interaction, we have 13.4. Lower, though, BZ was very generous with what he defined as interaction There's for the Wizards. Sauce. Yes, and card draw, we have 11 in each deck. So we're going to break down all of our $20 budget decks and then talk about what makes them easy to play, what makes them a good deck to lend out to somebody, and what might help them get acquainted with Commander easily. Yes, the first one we built was a Boros deck, and it's Chagic Blade of the Legions. And now this one's pretty simple. All you're going to do is turn your creature sideways, attack, get in, push through damage, and win that way. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of strengths to this deck in terms of I'm the new pilot. What does what the deck offer to me as a new player? Uh, Tajik's going to remain in play most of the time, so you don't have to really worry about... Uh, him getting removed 85 times, he's going to stick around and you're going to keep getting to do at least some of what the deck wants to do at all times. There's also multiple haste enablers and I think there's good ways to push through damage so that you're not just sitting there and wondering when to attack. There's a couple cards in there that make it very obvious. Tap all opponents' creatures. I can attack now. Yeah, also something else I really like about Tajik as a deck uh, is it introduces you to commander damage very well as Tajik, when he's attacking, is dealing Seven, making it a three-hit KO. Great for introducing commander damage to somebody who doesn't know what commander damage is. Yeah, it says attack with two things. Very clear, you want to attack all the time. So the key cards in the deck, 
that I think make it good slash helpful. I said Githzerai Monk is one of them, and there's also Subjugator Angel. They just tap everything you don't control. Get in there. Yeah, you need to uh, get your opponent's stuff tapped down so you can be the one to get your stuff in because the weakness of this deck is that it is an attack on the ground type deck, meaning you're going to get chump blocked a lot and often. Another card I really like for this deck for pushing through damage, Frontline Medic. Yeah. Uh, makes so all your attack is indestructible. We already know our commander is indestructible, but when the whole team's indestructible, you can just attack willy nilly. Yeah, there's a Loyal Unicorn also. These cards are super important, I think, because as the attack deck, you're not used to a four player game because you're brand new to commander. So you're like going to constantly question, like, I don't know, should I attack here? And then a lot of the times I see these new players just not attack. And it's like, I don't know. But this time, it's like, I do know. It's a free attack. I, I know what that is. I'm going to get in. This deck is an absolute get-in deck. Simple attacks. And yes, it's one of the weaker archetypes of Commander. But it's abs it's introduced in a great way. And we do have things that push the damage like the Monk. Yeah, we have Selfless Spirit, make things indestructible. It's also a cheap flyer. It's going to be easier to attack with. And then things like Deploy to the Front. Don't have a board state? Here you go. All in one. And they could have haste because we have haste enablers. All right. On to deck number two, and it's Thalys Reverent Medium. And this deck's game plan is really simple. We're going wide, and we're making lots of tokens because that's what Thalys cares about. Yeah, she says, make tokens, and I'll give you some more tokens. And similar to the Boros deck, there's a little bit of that here. All the tokens have flying. You can probably just jam in, especially since they're very expendable, and you know you're going to be able to push through damage. So it's not that confusing. Um, one of the strengths of this deck is the player's just always going to have tokens. You, uh, We put... A million, just like pay four, get four tokens. So whether you have Felice or not, you're always going to be able to just play a spell and have a bunch of tokens at once. Yeah, exactly. And that's the, that's what you want to be able to do. You want to go wide so you can get in with attacks. And we have lots of great anthems to pump up our creatures, you know, uh, get them stronger so that when we're attacking, they're not just one ones, they're two twos, they're three threes, they're bigger. Another thing, this deck has a lot of board wipes, but not board wipes that reset the game. They put the token deck in the absolute driver's seat, which lets you dominate the game either that turn or the next turn. Yeah, um, some of the key cards for this one that are really, really good, like Necrotic Hex is one of those board wipes you just talked about. Uh, we're going to be able to go so wide, Necrotic Hex won't wipe our board, but it will wipe everyone else's board usually, leaving you with a ton of zombies, plus the lethal trigger and give you a ton of flyers to go with those zombies. Yeah, and every one of these one-sided board wipes just takes the game, the complex game state, and just simplifies it right down because you have stuff and they don't. Time to get in. Yes, exactly. Um, I mean, what do you got to tell them? If they're asking, how do I catch uh, this hex card? You say, well, when you have seven creatures, you cast it so you keep your commander and you go crazy. Or you just profit 14 power with a regular one. Uh, there's also Army of the Damned. Here's an army in a can, literally twice. It's just, here's a thousand tokens you're going to be able to win with them next turn. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they're going to enter tapped, but the least just makes this card so much better. Like, it's already a fine, passable card that can win you games, especially in lower power commander. What if they came with 1-1 flyers? Well, the least just does that. Yeah, it, tokens can be confusing. If, if you have a million creatures that say, like, oh, when they die, make a token, or, like, when your tokens die, you lose one life. It's like, this starts to really bog down things. So we're happy to put the just one-off Make X tokens now. Make four tokens now. You don't have to worry about it. There's no, like, you're not going to get confused or decision par paralyzed because you just make tokens. Something that token decks do often, especially black-white token decks, is go to an aristocrat feel. And I feel like aristocrats is way too complex. You're choosing to sack off your resources, keep your resources. That gets really confusing really quick. So we completely avoided that and just made this more of an attack deck where we go wide and we beat our opponents. One of our best anthems in the whole deck is a Theory of Absolution, which it's just everything the deck wants. Shrinks our opponent's creatures, makes our creatures bigger, and it makes tokens just on gravy on top. Yeah, if you really get that second ability or that last ability, it's there for you. This deck, I love how straightforward it is, and I love that we didn't get bogged down by like the confusing pitfalls. You know, when you got like when you hand out a deck or you build a deck for somebody to borrow, it's like, oh, and you can do this here, and you can do this and this and this. It's like, make some tokens. Attack people. Yeah, when you build a deck for yourself, it gets super. It can be super confusing, and you can do all these cool little things. You can't do that when you're handing off your deck. You want someone to just pick it up and play it, and it be simple. Sub themes, I think, are probably a good thing to just avoid too many of, or any. Yes, just stick to one theme. What's your? What is the least gonna do? Oh, it's going to make tokens. Period. That third deck got pretty silly. This is Abomination of Lanoir, Elf, Tribal, and Green Black. This thing wants a bunch of elves and player in the graveyard, and it just gets huge. So you're flooding the board and the graveyard with elves. It's full stop. There's 50 elves in this deck. Every creature is an elf. There are no non-elves. You can't mess up. 
Play elves. Yeah, I mean, it's really, really simple. Elves just come down, they make mana, you play more elves. And the ultimate goal of this deck is just going to be uh, Abomination of Landwire is just going to run people over. Mm -hmm. So something that can be confusing about elf decks uh, very often is their wheel spinny. Uh, they're just going to go, uh, they're going to like tap their elves, untap their elves, make a ton of mana, float mana, draw cards, and it just gets to a point where it's like, this is confusing. Abomination of Landwire itself will take that away. It will make it so this is your beater. This will get in. And now we have other ways, obviously, to push through damage. We have, you know, overrun effects in this deck to make sure that our other elves can help us. But Abomination Landwire, again, going to be our main wing con. Yes. One po positive of this deck from a new player's perspective is a lot of the elves do something right away or they make mana. And then they don't really have a lot, a lot of text. So there's not a lot to keep track of. There's a couple anthems in there. You want to play a bunch of elves for a few key cards. But the text of every elf does not matter. There are no Heritage Druid, Birch Lore Rangers nonsense or Umbral Mantle things. Don't You're not ever untapping anything. You're not ever worrying about grouping elves and stuff. It's like you have elves in play. Some of them make mana. Now you can overrun. Yeah, exactly. And like things like Elvish Eric Druid, I is, like everything this deck wants, makes mm -hmm. a ton of mana. If Now, your friends have to be able to count. Can they count how many elves they have in the battlefield? It's going to be a challenge. I, I know some of us have friends that can't count. And that's, and that's okay. Uh, but you can count them for them. And then they will make that much money. I mean, interestingly enough, it's one of the reasons that we made sure there was no non-elves. You can't count wrong. The number of creatures in play is the number of elves in play. The number of creatures in your graveyard is the number of elves in your graveyard. Yes, you can't mess up with this deck. This deck is just made so that anybody can just pick it up and play it and not make simple little mistakes that anyone could make. Yeah, I also think there's a little bit of board wipe insurance with this deck. Uh, if all your elves get swept away and die, well, now you have a 50-50 that can attack. Yeah, exactly, because uh, Abomination of Landwehr checks the graveyard, mm -hmm. so there's always that. You always have the Abomination of Landwehr just waiting to be a huge, giant threat. Yeah, in addition to, like, Elvish Archdruid and those types of things that make a bunch of mana, Elvish Mystic, there's five versions of that in this deck, so we're going to get to make mana. They're not difficult cards to grasp, I don't think, and they're going to help ramp you out. And Elvish Mystic is just straight up one of the, like, top 100 cards in the whole entire format. Card is really, really good, and it's just it, you just get to play five of them in this deck. Yeah, we also, which has been a common theme among these decks, there's one-sided wipes that make combat a breeze. we got Crippling Fear, everything but yours gets minus three, minus three. Same is true of Eye Blight's ending, and there's other things in here that just go, all oh, my elves can attack now. I don't have to worry about this stupid tension of like, well, do I attack or do I push through five damage? Like, I'll just push through all the damage. Yeah, exactly. Um, like, these decks are designed to be able to push through and win in the end of the game because ultimately what can happen in a lot of commander games especially lower power commander games is you end up with these board stalls that are absolutely miserable and those will drive your friends right away from the game seriously it is pretty off-putting the first couple times you play until you realize all right this is the way the games are and i have ways to break through it's like we're building in ways to break through that are also very easy to understand if you'd like to see all of these deck lists they're all on boxfield.com our favorite deck building website we seriously sat down for about what three four hours and just mm -hmm. built these decks yesterday five I'm and a half four and a half hours, sat on Moxfield, grinded out these decks, and made these awesome cool decks for everyone to play, and Moxfield tells you all the stats. How do you think we got those stats to figure out how much interaction is here? We went to Moxfield. We used Moxfield. Yeah, how do you think we got them all to almost exactly $20 without going over and making sure there were still awesome splurge cards in there? Moxfield.com, it shows you the price. It shows you you can sort by price, sort by whatever you want, and it's just so easy. That's where you can view all these decks in the description. Uh, you can buy them for $20, so... I guess if you just want a really cheap deck also, get one of these because they're going to function. Yeah, go to Moxfield, get the deck list, and then just buy it. It lets you transcribe right to TCG Player. Yeah, also something about these decks is you can probably get them now. I, I don't think you can get it for $20 because there's always shipping. There's going to be some shipping. There's going to be some shipping. You can probably get them all for under 30 so that's going to feel really good. And you'll be if you go get, get our deck off of there and then go to TCG Player, you would actually be supporting Moxfield in that case. Wow, that's pretty sweet. Now, what's the number four deck? Uh, the number four deck is one I got to do a lot of building in, and it's Tatiova, Benefic, Druid. This is very simple. It's Landfall. You play a land, you draw a card. It's really, really, really simple. Whenever a land comes to play, you draw. So what are we doing? We're doing the classic Simic thing. We're going to get lots and lots of lands in play, and then we're going to play giant, big monsters. I think this deck uh, might encapsulate Commander the most, uh, for me at least, uh, where it's just... It's the biggest, the dumbest, the silliest cards that you don't get to see anywhere else getting on the battlefield. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of triggers, but it's the triggers are never different. It's the same trigger. It's draw a card, gain a life. We know how to do that. It's satisfying to go big in general. So a new player playing this might be like, I just put like three seven sevens in play and like bashed everybody's brains out. Yeah, this is also um, like a landfall deck. So that's like, that's the main trigger you have to know. You have to know when you play a land, check your battlefield to see what 
triggers off of those landfall because that's what this deck is looking to do. Oh, like you said, you're going to get to play so many big, silly, stupid dummies. Uh, the best one in the deck probably is Rampaging Bayloth. Pretty simple. I mean, how can you really be upset about playing a Rampaging Bayloth? 6-6, six, six, landfall, make 4-4. Four, four. It goes right along with what the deck wants to do. I think once you get the big boys out, it's also very easy to go from there. It's like, well, you're going to overwhelm people. Your, your creatures are bigger than theirs. Um, the pilot, they can take a lot of game actions without the decision paralysis, like I said, because it's so linear. It's like, play Cultivate, which gives you Cultivate. You know how to resolve that. Land and play. Oh, I get to draw another card. Great. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's exactly what you're going to do. You're just going to... You're gonna, your land's gonna play, you're gonna draw cards, and then you're gonna slam big giant creatures. There's, the creatures aren't complex. They're just, they're big, they're fat, and they're going to beat in. Yeah, Verdant Force is one of them. Um, Terastodon is another one. It's, it's just gigantic. Yeah, exactly. And you're gonna get, you get to play removal in your new decks. I think something that a lot of new players avoid is they go completely battle cruiser and they don't have any removal. All of our decks have removal. And like, so you're gonna actually, like, that's gonna be the toughest choice you have to make. But I think it's something you got to learn in Commander. Yeah, and we have less interaction than the average uh, starter Commander, but it's better. It's going to do the job more. If you want to go compare to those decks... More efficient. Yeah, then some of the decks were really lacking. Like, I know the green-white deck did not have enough of all three of those pieces. Yeah, which is completely fair. Uh, so another card we got to add to this deck, and I think it's just a great win con, it's going to push to the damage for us. Azuri's Predation It's going to wipe all of their creatures with four or less toughness, and we're going to get a ton a ton of beasts and just beat in. Especially if this is going to be played against other decks, like in this little cycle, or even other uh, commander starter decks from Wizards. 4-4s Four are going to wipe the tokens decks, they're going to wipe the zombies decks, they're going to wipe the uh, elves decks for the most part. Yeah, all these decks have a lot of good cards that are going to, against each other on the same power level, be amazing. Like, the Get to Monk from earlier is going to be ridiculous for pushing through damage and just winning the game. Azuri's Predation, Crippling Fear that we talked about earlier. All the decks have cards mm -hmm. like this. And for our blue-red deck, we did niv Mizzet the Firemind. We went we went, we went there. We yeah. went there. Because normally this is like Notorious, Infinite Combo, Untappy, whatever, McGee card. But we just don't have that. It turns out this card is really simple because it says tap, draw a card, deal a damage. And the only, thing have, the only thing you have to check is when you cast spells, and when you draw cards. So we're drawing our cards to power up our spells and creatures. That is all. Yeah, I do want to say this is the most complex of the decks. It, uh, we look through blue-red, and we this was like the simplest thing we could do. It's like, all right, we're going to cast spells. We're going to draw cards. That's what we're going to do. It's all about casting spells and drawing cards. Now, uh, this is the one that I would avoid the most if your, your friend is actually very new. Like, if they're brand new, go to the other four first before this one. But this one is not too complicated for anybody who's played any like if they've played other formats and they're coming into commander this is perfect for them i'm proud of us for making spell slinger so linear and simplified because the turns are strong but they will not be drawn out like the normal spell slinger you don't have a thousand decisions to make you have four really good ones there's no rituals there's no untappers there's minimal cantrips so you can't get bogged down with all of this like oh what do i do do i pass a turn uh, it's like we kept a lot of it to sorcery i think there's the same amount of sorceries as instants yeah, and uh, for our main win con, uh, yeah, we have a gutter snipe in here, which is a great way to deal and dish out damage. But the main thing is we have things like Haughty Jin, Enigma Drake, Crackling Drake, mm -hmm. uh, and something Chimera. Yeah, hopefully. even like Thundering Jin and Sturmgeist. They're just all gigantic. They care about your hand size or they care about um, the spells in the graveyard, which you cast to then draw your cards. So it's like if your hand is big, you can just smash in with these huge creatures. You don't have to go wide. We're not... We're not going wide with uh, Murmuring Mystic and Young Pyromancer. We're going huge, and we can protect them with a few counter spells. Yeah, exactly. We have a we have a few counter spells to protect them, and these things are really, really silly. Like they they can end up being like twenty twenties, like not twenty twenties, but twenty fours. Just well, twenty power, four toughness. Confusing. I know how I said it. Twenty fours doesn't make sense. Twenty fours. Uh, Boon of the Wishgiver is the type of card draw you'll see a lot of the sorcery speed draw cards right now and in big batchings or you can cycle it for one it's like that's all gonna trigger niv it it's great all your creatures love it yep and you get to learn how to play counter spells with negate i think counter spells are super important every deck needs you need to learn how to play them eventually and yes this is one of the, the counter spell might be one of the hardest cards to play in the deck that you also have someone tatsy over but hey i think th i think they have to be included in the decks they're such an integral part of the commander format this is probably the simplest way to get used to it if it threatens your big giant 20 power flyer you counter it yeah that's pretty. If simple. not, you can probably you're fine. Yeah, that's like does it does it negatively impact me? Am I going to lose? No. Okay. Right, if fine. I get to keep this creature, I'm gonna kill somebody with it. If you're interested in building other budget decks for yourself, if you don't want to use these ones or think about what makes these ones so great, you can check out our budget bomb series where we talk about some of the best cards you can buy for under a dollar. 
Peace out, Tribe Scouts.